Sean, so this podcast is all about you guys, your journey in music, and how you got to where you are now. Sweet. Sweet. So we can start. Um, just who who wants to go first? Born and raised. Born and raised. Okay. Well, why don't we? Okay. Yeah. Well, why don't we introduce ourselves real quick? Yeah, uh, let's do that. That'll make it easier. Again. We are reverse. reverse. My name is Diz. I'm Khadija. My name is Zach. And I am Monroe. Born and raised. Yes, I am a Toronto, Canada native. Um, and I'm a world traveler. I've, uh, you know, uh, but uh, Toronto born. And <laughs> uh, Toronto, I will stay as a home base forever. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like? I know there's a big music scene in Toronto. Yes, actually, there's, um, I would say, um, maybe it seems smaller when you're in it because you know the world is such a uh, a stage that we're you know looking to partake in so it's you know uh it's more of like the bedroom is my city and then the world is the you know the career <laughs> got it got it got it how did you get into music part of me how did you get into music how did i get into music that's so interesting okay so uh, a little quick uh, story for you. We all actually met on stage performing um, a, 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 a stage version of High School Musical 2. Uh, at the time, really? we were all cast in various roles, and that was a big part of my life and how I actually met all of my family and friends to here to my side. Um, and once that was uh, uh, done, I had always known that I wanted to kind of have musical involvement in my life, but um, mm -hmm. I always thought it would take the form of, of kind of acting and music. Um, okay. and as time has progressed, I've realized that, no, you know, I'm actually destined for kind of like as an artist, uh, thanks to his, his uh, awesome, you know, star picking quality. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how dare I call myself a star? But you are a star. <laughs> <laughs> so always, were you in singing at a very, very early age and always kind of interested in musical theater? Yes, yes, I always was. So like from the early days singing in my mom's car, she was like, you know, divorced woman and we'd she'd be like, we'd be rocking out to like Alanis Morissette, Jagged Little Pill. But oh, all one of the greatest records ever written, by the way. One of the, absolutely. And isn't, she's Canadian. Yes. Yes. <laughs> hey. Come on. <laughs> yeah, a little bit eclectic that way. You know, we had some ABBA, we had some Alanis Morissette, and we have had so much 90s boy bands, girl bands, just anything from that from that era uh, got me going. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, so well, Monroe, we're born and raised? I was born and raised in Mississauga, Ontario. It's about 15 minutes from Toronto. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of where I grew up, and uh, but I travel often to Toronto, obviously for gigs and where my friends are, and it's just that's where you kind of want to be, you know, in Toronto, in the city. So mm -hmm. yeah. And how are you in introduced to music? Um, I've been singing my whole entire life, as cliche as that may sound. <laughs> from the car seat. Pardon me. I said from the car seat. From the car seat, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, my father is also a musician. He was a drummer. And so music was introduced into my life very young. And I grew up listening to variety of different types of music. But it's funny, I actually never showed um, that I could sing to anybody until I was about like 15 years old, because I was super shy. <laughs> um, and then one day I sang at a talent show and they're like, you can sing. And I was like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I kind of grew up listening to Celine Dion, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey. Um, and I used to listen to their music and I used to sing along. And I knew that if I was matching the same sound as them, I knew I was doing something right. So that was kind of my start into being a singer, I guess. I mean, I'm intrigued about your father being a drummer. Was he like, uh, was he in a, like a rock band drummer? Was he an orchestra like marching band guy? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely like, uh, like seventies rock band, eighties rock band. They were actually called illusion. <laughs> I didn't even know that. Didn't know that. Know. Yeah, they used to like all dress the same in their suits and their and their like you know seventies like top hats. And my dad was the drummer; he was the tallest one, and he'd always be in the back with his like vest. And <laughs> it's an ongoing joke that like every time he talks to reverse, he's like, you know, if you ever need some yeah. drums on a track, yeah. and I'm like, okay, oh. dad. Every time, I am your guy. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's amazing. Did you ever play drums? No, I never play drums. I actually don't play any instruments. The only instrument is my voice and I'm totally okay with that. But yes. um, yeah, I definitely can like, you, that's like rhythm. five instruments in one, like the <laughs> level of singing that you operate at. So oh, thank you. <laughs> were you in a musical theater as well? But you said 15, like how did, like how did your career kind of progress from there? Um, I kind of auditioned for this company one day and they were like, hey, do you want to be a star? And I was like, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> of course uh, I do. <laughs> so I went to audition and I actually ended up meeting, um, these guys in an audition room for high school musical and that's when I got casted and that's kind of when my professional career started um, at a very young age but uh, definitely always into musical theater I actually thought I was going to be a musical theater artist when I was younger um, like always a pop star but like as I got older I was like okay maybe musical theater is the route I'm going to take but as I got older I was like okay you know what I think being the pop star in a group, I think that's kind of more in my lane anyways. Huh. But we met in High School Musical and um, Diz created the group, Reverse. And here we are today sitting on a couch talking to you. Wow. Wow. So from that, from that audition, landing the part, that's how kind of the whole group formed. I mean, how many years ago was the, was the High School Musical 2 thing? about 10. 2008. That was 2008. Wow. And then have you guys been a group like Sense then, or was that something that kind of came later down the line? So um, Khadija and I started working on Reverse. Um, sorry, Reverse existed, um, <laughs> what, two? The group was first put together in like 2000, I don't know, five or six. I've, I've been putting together groups since I was 14 years old. So it's been okay. a journey for me. But in terms of the first um, incarnation of Reverse, that was in the early 2000s. Um, but once we did High School Musical, um, uh, I had no members at the time. Everybody left because I had, they left because I did High School Musical and I was no longer available all the time to be uh, uh -huh. running the group. So people were kind of like, well, I'm going to go do my own thing. And then I had no members. So then once <laughs> High School Musical, um, Khadija was the first one that um, I kind of scooped up and brought in. Um, and that was in 2009. And then Zach Nero came in. Um, a couple of years later. So we, we were officially, this reverse officially came to be in 2012. Okay, okay, okay. Well, Dizzy, what's your story? I mean, where were you born and raised? Same, okay. are you all from Canada? Yes, Toronto, Canada. Okay. Parents are I love Canadians. And I will say you have the greatest national anthem of all time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> whenever I talk to somebody from Canada, I'm like, I have to let them know. I love that. I love that national anthem. It's so oh, good. Thank you. Adam, you need to hear our yeah. arrangement of the national anthem. You're gonna. I, love I would love to hear that. That is it recorded somewhere? <laughs> yeah, actually, there is. We can we can shoot you the link after this. Okay. Well, I'd love to hear that. Okay. So, Dizzy, where, born and raised. Where were you born and raised? Close to Toronto as well. Toronto, Canada. Both my parents are from Jamaica, though. So I'm an island guy at heart. <laughs> okay. And when did they move? Like, were you were born in Canada? Like, how long were they in Canada prior to that? Like, what uh, made them go to come to Canada? My mom came here when she was five. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, very, very young and built their lives here. Okay. I didn't, wasn't sure if they met there and then moved the like, no, jobs no. or, okay. Here, yeah. Okay. So how did you get into music? Oh my gosh, I got into music really as a result of just um, my family. My family is very much a um, arts, entertainment and sports family. Like I have um, family members that are in uh, Major League Baseball, can, uh, CFL, Canadian Football League. My aunt was an Olympian. And then I have a lot of musicians in my family, like um, lots of singers, lots of dancers. So just growing up, um, my sister and I, we would just watch um, my aunt and uncle dance to, I, I grew up believing my aunt was Janet Jackson. I promise. <laughs> Ah, that's awesome. Yeah, the first artist that I remember like witnessing as a result of my aunt like studying Rhythm Nation and I would we would sit down and just watch her dance. <laughs> and so um, it was just watching them and, and my mom um, was a connoisseur of music, particularly R&B from the 80s and, and 90s. So just all the music that she would listen to, I, it just was a part of my world all the time. Okay. And did you, do you play an instrument or was it always vocals? And I mean, obviously you have an eye and an ear for, for putting groups together. Come on. <laughs> um, my instrument is my pen. Cause ah. I write, I write the songs and my voice. So, so the voice and the pen and the songs and the, that's my instrument. <laughs> well, when did the pen and the voice come together? Like when did you start writing songs? 
Um, I wrote my first song when I was eight. It was trash, wow. but it's okay. I, I was eight. <laughs> Oh my God! Give yourself a break. It was you were eight. <laughs> For an eight Khadija's like it was. It was a. It was a Grammy hit. <laughs> it, was, it was called Secret Garden. It was called Sorry. I'm, what? Secret Garden. Secret, Secret Garden. And it was Janet Jackson. <laughs> it was called Secret Garden. And um, I want to sing a little bit of it for you. <clears throat> Come into my secret garden. This is where it's at. The doom doom. When you turn the corner. You'll see a flower covered cat. But if you tell anybody what is going on, <laughs> you'll be friends with nobody. Come into my secret garden. Hey, flowers all around. The ding ding bushes with raspberries planted in the ground. So, yeah, that's all I remember. Yeah, this is a smash. What are you talking? That sounds like something that would be on the radio in like uh, 2001. I mean, that's, I that is a it. hit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So writing about bushes with raspberries planted in the ground. It was just cats. innocent. Flowered covered cats. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Wow. Okay. So we, you must have been in, were you in groups prior to, to doing High School Musical or were you in yeah. musical theater? Yeah. So, so um, as I mentioned earlier, I had uh, started putting groups together since I was 14 years old, like mm -hmm. mostly in church. I would round okay. up like, um, the other kids and put together these like seven, eight member groups and we'd be singing and dancing. And um, I, I've just been in so many different part um, uh, uh, groups and, and um, different formations and incarnations of bands um, my whole entire life. So it was almost like I was like in training, like learning what a successful group would look like, what type of personalities you need to work with, the types of talent, the types of just, just all that the vibe, the energy, like I was studying from a very young age. So um, it really kind of gave me this eye and this um, sense um, when encountering other artists, like this person, um, first of all, is a star and also might be good in a band. Wow, that's so fascinating. At 14, you're like, all right, everybody, you you four are great. Let's put this together. I've got some songs. Let me sing it to you. This one's about a cat with a flower on the head. We're going to do this. Yes, 100%. <laughs> oh, my gosh, that's so cool. And then what what made you audition for my uh, high school musical? Just that, saw the flyer. Like, how did that? How did you guys all like find this? High school musical. So, so I came across um, some kind of advertisement. It was it was being promoted somewhere. Maybe I, you know what it was. Um, we had like it wasn't it wasn't Craigslist, but it was like one of those like um, sites where they just have like listings of different things. Uh -huh. And I remember maybe it was Craigslist. I think it was like a, yeah, it was it was a, a like a local like, like platform that posted uh, uh, casting calls because Toronto is a big um, uh, just film TV as well mm -hmm. as acting uh, uh, place. Um, so lots of productions happen here. And, and so there's a lot of, uh, you know, different forums and boards. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so just coming across, uh, one of those advertisements, uh, I decided to audition because a group fell apart. That's why I, did, I auditioned. I was working on a group. Everybody had gone off to, to do their own thing. And I was like, sad and like, okay, well, what am I going to do now? And then I saw the, the advertisement. I was like, let's go. So pu pulled together my audition songs and went in there and did my thing. And then here we are. Well, Crushed it and got yeah. in. And then... <laughs> All right, Kadisha, it's your turn. We're born and raised. Toronto. That's my guess. No. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. I'm wrong. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm here, the wild card, to throw everyone off. OK. Uh, I was actually born in Port of Spain, Trinidad. Come on. So like island gal. That's Trinidad. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. And then I moved to Canada when I was very young, but I was raised in British Columbia on the West Coast. Okay. And I've only been in Toronto only. I've been in Toronto like, I don't know, maybe like 15 years. Oh. I've been in Toronto a long time, but I wasn't born here. <laughs> okay. So was that being from British Columbia, was that a bit different? I mean, I'm sure it's got to be much different. I'm coming from the States, being from, you know, California and the West Coast. The East Coast is quite different as far as culturally and everything. Was that similar? Uh, British Columbia versus where Toronto is in Ontario? Yes, absolutely. I think British Columbia is very, I, I didn't, I don't think I ever felt like I was in a big city until I came to Toronto. Even Vancouver, which is the biggest city in Britain. right and right on the on the west coast like yeah. i mean literally on the water there uh it still feels very um 
kind of like a town. It's like little pockets of towns that all got squished together. So it still feels very small town. But then Toronto is like super urban. You have skyscrapers and traffic and so many different cultures. Everybody's all together. So it definitely was a huge shift. But for me, especially at that time, was like so exciting. I'm like, yes, like I feel like I'm now experiencing the world for real. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, how did you get into music? Um, this we all share in common. I also have a very musical family. Um, Amazing. I have several uncles who are professional musicians and aunts who are singers and dancers in my family. So it has always been part of my life. I used to be sitting in like in the band practices with my family, like just listening to them or watching them. My mom likes to joke that my first official performance is when I was three years old. My uncle <laughs> called me up on stage and I was just a little three-year-old like standing there smiling, <laughs> but that was my debut. That was my first performance. <laughs> my <laughs> debut. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So music has always been in my life. Amazing. Well, so you were kind of like, did you, like, you're talking about your uncles being very successful musicians. Like, was that something that you were kind of around enough to be like, this is what I want to do. Like I'm seeing them on stage performing to these crowds and now they're bringing me up on stage at three. Did that kind of just shift you in that mindset? Like, this is, this is where I want to go. No, really? I think of the four of us, everybody else always was like, I'm going to be a musician. And I was kind of more like, at the time that we did High School Musical, I was dancing. Um, I had just kind of made the decision that like, maybe I can be a professional dancer and that's what I want to do for my career. But I didn't ever really consider any career in the arts until I moved to Toronto. That's crazy. I think it's weird, right? But I think it's, there's a difference, like Zach was saying, because there's such an industry here, in BC, there's nothing, there's really nobody. So you don't look around, even though I had family that were musicians, it still felt like looking at Britney Spears, like she lives in a different world, not my reality. They're over there doing what musicians do, but like, I don't have the opportunity to go do that yeah. until I moved to Toronto. And then I saw people actually doing it. And I was like, oh, well, let me try, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then here I am. <laughs> wow. Well, what took you to, what, what made you want to move to Toronto? Was there like a specific thing Honestly, that happened or? Was, uh, no, it was just, um, I was in university at the time and I was like, I want to just be somewhere different. My sister was living here. Um, and yeah, there wasn't any real deep thought that went into it. It was just kind of like, let me try. <laughs> let me go live there for a while, see how it is, see if I like it. And I ended up loving it and never leaving. Wow. Okay. And, and landing the role in High School Musical obviously changed your life as far as Dizzy absolutely. creates this group. And, and now you guys are up absolutely killing it. Um, I want to know. <laughs> so, so Dizzy, how do you approach everyone else and say, hey, I want to form this group? Because it sounds like you were kind of the, you curated this. Yeah. Yeah, he's the mastermind. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do I approach? So, so, so do you want like a specific example or just a general? <laughs> Whatever. I'm, I'm, a, it's all about you guys. You tell okay. me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I remember, um, I'll give, I'll give the example of Monroe. So I remember, um, Zach Khadija and I were already reverse, um, before Monroe came in the group and Zach came oh. in on 2011 and Monroe uh, came in 2012. And that was because we were working with a um, manager. So, so at one point I was signed to um, Howie Duro from the Backstreet Boys. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, him and this gentleman named CJ Heyer, they had a company called Three Street Management. And then they ended up um, getting a publishing, um, like songwriting publishing situation called Jacoby Music. And okay. they assigned me um, to a publishing deal. Oh, that was after. But anyway, so, so, <laughs> <laughs> so through CJ, this guy, the, the, the man CJ, he was kind of, managing us so to speak he was kind of like testing the waters and seeing like what we were and if it was going to make sense between him and us and so um i remember one time we had gone to um a meeting with him at his office and um he was really busy he's like sorry god i've been so busy one of my other artists they're performing uh the national anthems at the nba all-star game and i sat there like i want to sing at an nba all-star game and so then i was like but in order to do that you need a certain type of voice. Like if you're gonna sing, if you're gonna sing an anthem, like you gotta, you gotta have a certain type of soaring voice 
that's going to make people feel patriotic. They're sure. going to make, it needs to make you feel like um, that voice is carrying you and like lifting you higher and higher. That's mm -hmm. what an anthem vo vo vocal is to me. So I was like, I don't have that. <laughs> she don't have that. And he don't have that. We have vocal <laughs> stylings, but we don't have that type of voice. Right. So I'm like, bitch, we're gonna, oh, sorry. You can um, cuss. No, you can cuss. Okay. <laughs> you can say, again, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> All right, so I was like, we're gonna, we're gonna add, we're gonna find that voice. And I, I didn't even need to find it because I knew where to get it from. I was like, Monroe was, what, there was like kind of like a vocal trinity in the high school musical um, situation. And she was one of the, the top three, like really, really big singers. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, Monroe. And so I remember one time we, um, I was Khadijah in her car. No, no, you were in Trinidad. No, I wasn't, I wasn't you were in Trinidad. Trinidad. Um, I was in somebody's car. Was it you? My car? Sa yeah, it was Sandra. Yeah. <laughs> but we were in our former manager's car. And um, uh, I was like, let me call her right now. So I called Monroe and she was like, at the club. She was at, like, I was at she, the club. She was fixing to go to the club. <laughs> and I was like, hey, girl, so um, do you want to join the reverse? Before, before I could even really finish, she was like, yes! <laughs> before I because she was watching kind of what we were doing and oh. I was surprised that she wasn't like fully fully um at least um diving into like the artist thing I think she was doing like some acting and some other things yeah. but not really pursuing her like like superstar vocalist pop star thing so so I asked her and she was like yes she joined the group and then like then fast forward to 2000, 2019. 2019 we sang at the Scotiabank Arena, like seven or eight times singing the national anthems for the Raptors for the NBA. No way. Yes. Yeah. And that was when they like what they made it to the championship, right? Like, yeah. I mean, that was after, they had right? just won the championship. So then as soon as the next season started, we were one of the first anthem singers. Wow, that's huge. Okay. Yeah. Well, so so how does like reverse starts, but how, Dizzy, so the first person to who how did who did you approach first and how did it kind of it sounded like Moreau was the last, the last Moreau piece the of the last. puzzle. Yeah, Khadija was the first. Um, Khadija was this. I'll keep it. I'll condense it. We were in rehearsal for High School Musical two. Um, we were on a lunch break. I was tired. I went into my change room to take a nap, but somebody left the the overhead um, speakers on that they give you the, your calls whenever you, your cues to get on stage. Mm -hmm. Somebody put that on, and at one point I heard somebody um, playing, strumming the guitar and singing in the theater somewhere. And I was like, who is that? And <laughs> creeping through the dark theater. And um, <laughs> lo and behold, it was Khadija in a corner playing the guitar and singing. And I was like, bitch, you sing? <laughs> like, I, I thought she was, was like, cause she's a fierce dancer. Like she's like the dancer. So I was like, you can also sing like that. And you play the guitar. I'm like, you have to join my group. And she took a little bit of time to think about it. And here we are. <laughs> <laughs> but did you have a group? It was just you, right? Uh, Would you like to cool. join my group of I don't have anybody yet. Like was, that must have been quite the convincing conversation. <laughs> well, you know what? Actually, um, I did have a group, but the members were like, we're gonna do our own thing. So they were kind of like not really sure. But once I brought Khadija in, we started to um rehearse with them again on our off days for high school musical. Mm -hmm. And then midway through us doing that, the two of them left anyway. And then um, it was Khadija, myself, and another guy. We were together for about a year and a half. We've been through a couple different formations of groups before we ended up with these this final lineup <laughs> ah okay so then zach how do you get involved like you just did you know about reverse or was this something that how did how did you, how did you get, how did I get involved well i was probably uh staring into the distance with an open mouth and like drool coming out of my uh, <laughs> you know when when <laughs> context yeah, for context yeah that was definitely Zach when he was younger <laughs> I, um, to to be honest I, I think my, mine was uh, the, the member that Diz was referencing earlier um, I, I believe at that point had had uh, left yeah the so 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 we were I'll be very quickly Please, there was yeah. another guy that we were working with he we were, did actually some pretty big things as a trio and kind of at the height of the situation he went decided to leave um to go back to school and pursue a solo career and then at that point um in an attempt to kind of keep the momentum, the momentum going um we uh as 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 that. and i i I'd, uh, i almost want to like go back on what i said earlier about like mm -hmm. i always thought i was going to go down the acting path i actually was in uh a ska bands when i was I was singing and playing trumpet in ska bands and we were doing like pretty like awesome things uh, wow. in high school and then going into university. So 
I always kind of had um, a familiarity with being in, uh, I guess, a band could technically be a group. It's just, you know, different, different medium. But, um, and then when Diz asked me, I was like, hell yeah. Sure. <laughs> Obviously, well, yeah. <laughs> that's um, fascinating that you were in a ska band. So did you play, you said trumpet? Yeah, so I, I, uh, you know what? I, 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 today, I feel like it wouldn't be an honest thing to say I still play the trumpet because I haven't played in so many years. But um, I used to love my trumpet and we would just have so much fun and, you know, just like play the likes of like Streetlight Manifesto and like some uh -huh. and then Real Big Fish. And, <laughs> and we would like, you know, like scat, like just uh. <laughs> day, any song that has brass instruments in it, my ears are just like, huh. <laughs> I'm alive, yeah. Well, so what's what ska were you into? Was that it? Like Boston's and uh, Real Big Fish and and with specials, like any, that type of stuff. Anything that was like super poppy ska that was just like feel good and um, you know just uh, like anything that you could dance to and move your body to. Mm -hmm. Like it's this place where it's like you know if you can go to the concert and everybody's dancing um that's the type of concert that i would probably be one of those people dancing you know uh -huh. so i love it i love it that's very cool Did, were you in the high school uh like or like orchestra or the marching band or anything like that oh, yeah oh yeah uh we uh we like it, like in terms of the actual orchestra and uh you know from that point forward like uh you know all of the battle of the bands and things like that battle of the bands. <laughs> the <battle. laughs> oh my gosh um but, but absolutely we would we, i was more in school i was more of like going to like the science competitions um oh you know, really yes yes that was uh growing up in my family you know it was like the accountant lawyer or like doctor you know, doctor. doctor path yeah scientist <laughs> <laughs> generation Canadian, as, as many of us here in this country and yours, right? So sure, sure, but, sure. Wow. Um. Well, what? I, now I'm curious on the trumpet. What drew you to the trumpet? What drew me? Okay. So actually, <laughs> wasn't my first choice. Um, really? I, I actually got an instrument uh, in in I guess mid in middle school that wasn't my first choice either. In order, my choices were guitar because you got to pick like I guess a one, two, three, and then you got somewhere in, in the lineup. I didn't even get any of the three within my lineup with <laughs> guitar, uh, uh, drums, and then I believe I wanted uh, um, uh, baritone. Okay. I started off with flute. Really? So, yes. And then in grade eight, my teacher went on a maternity leave, and we had this like teacher from like hell who was like this <laughs> like she had a, like a deep like Russian accent, and she was like, "You no play flute." She's like, flute "For girls." She's like, you play trumpet. <laughs> she handed me a trumpet, took the flute from my mouth. And from that point forward, I started playing the trumpet. Oh my gosh. Wow. Big story. Is that yeah. Is? I actually just reminded me of it, actually. She, you told you, she told you that only girls play the flute? No. 100. And meanwhile, there was like like five guys, like just like <laughs> right. uh, putting down their flute slowly. <laughs> oh my gosh. You should have just brought a Jethro Tull record and smacked her across the face with it. <laughs> that's it, totally, that's how I feel today. But like, you know, at the time, obviously a little, you know, boy, I'm, I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, that was like, I'd run to the hills. Like, you know, I, I'd do whatever to, whatever you say, I'll trumpet it is. <laughs> right. Well, at least trumpet drew you to the, the being in a band and then the obviously ska and being kind of taking that path. That's kind of, that's interesting. Totally, totally. So I'm so grateful that it, in fact, did go that way. Um, in fact, I can kind of say that about everything in life. Um, but yeah. Wow. Wow. And then, well, where did, were you always, aside from being in marching band, I mean, I've heard that that's, I wasn't in it, but I've heard that that's very, like, you know, time consuming. You have to do the competitions and you're doing all this other stuff. Like, where did the vocals come in and, and like, more of the acting musical theater? So, um so it, like how like how did those things go or like how did I find no it? like how did you like find yeah how'd you find that like how'd you find time <laughs> like, you know what I mean I have a I have some magic tri tricks up my sleeve I'm just got it that, like I'm I'm I've always been uh, uh, someone who operates uh, with both sides of their brain kind of needing stimulation at all times so mm -hmm. Gemini yeah <laughs> I guess I guess so so. <laughs> Half of my body right now is like in Korea eating some street food and like <laughs> enjoying some some things and no, I'm kidding. But um, 
I, I just have a, a, a strong, I guess, like that, that, that mathematics, like uh, more technical uh, side of me with, with numbers and, and, you know, the science and hypothesis tests and things like that, that really just like invigorates me, but then it kind of falls short because I have that other side that needs it. So I've always just been a busy person and finding ways to like fit, you know, circles into squares in my, in my schedule. Um, sure. and the day, uh, it's all choices. Uh -huh. I don't make a choice to give up on some other things in my life so that I can, um, you know, do the things that make me happy. I love that. That's yeah. Wow. Okay. So then you, you join reverse. Now there's three of you. And then you, how does Monroe, how do you join the, the group? They obviously, they, they approach you. And what were you doing prior to, to, to joining with up with them? Um, like Diz mentioned, prior to joining Reverse, I was doing a lot of like acting stuff. Uh -huh. I was doing a lot of auditioning for musical theater um, because that's where I thought that my professional career was going. Because mm -hmm. in high school, I was the drama kid. Um, I was always in musical theater classes. I was the one being chosen to do the presentations. I was always the one like in front of everybody. So I was like, okay, I guess this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm a very artsy types of type of person. So yeah, I was definitely doing some acting gigs before um, Diz approached me. And I, I still remember his call to this day. I was in the passenger seat of my best friend's car. It sounds like a song. In the passenger seat of my best friend's car. And, um, and then I get a phone call and it's like Diz. I'm like, Diz? What's he calling me for, right? <laughs> at midnight so I, was like, <laughs> I was like maybe something's wrong so I pick up the phone and he was like hey girl and I was like hi <laughs> he's like oh I have a question for you <laughs> <laughs> Diz like, how do you feel about this impression she's doing of you right now that's my question oh, <laughs> <not you. laughs> okay <laughs> And I'm like, uh, he's like, so, and I'm like, yeah. He's like, I have a question. Um, I was wondering, do you want to be a part of reverse? And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and, and he's like, do you want to be a part of reverse? And I'm like, yes. He's like, take the time to think about it. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> I didn't need a minute or a second to think about anything. I was so excited. I was like, this night could not get any better. Yeah. I'm going to the club. Now I'm gonna like live my dream to be Britney Spears, and uh, here here I am today. Yes, so it was, it was such a great night, and it was in wow. May. It was a night in May. It was. It was cute. Yeah, cute. that is quite the story. That's I love that. I love that. And so once you join, like, so you guys have a very successful YouTube channel, correct? And does that start like how does the YouTube thing correspond with? with the music was the music thing already like here and then you started YouTube and it kind of caught up to it or like how did you guys mesh the two together that's actually really interesting for us and we it's, we've been talking about it a lot our journey lately because we just launched season four of our um reaction series reverse reaction yeah. we've kind of been talking about this whole process like how are we at season four of a YouTube series already? <laughs> um, but yeah, it was actually kind of coincidental. We did not plan to like launch this huge YouTube channel, but we did a an interview with actually somebody that Zach went to high school with, was producing this show for another um, content creator. And she was bringing us on to do an interview as pop R&B group Reverse to talk about music and our experiences as a group. And then, after the interview, she was like, hey, we do this kind of cool like reaction thing on her channel. Do you guys want to try a couple episodes with her? Because you're a pop group and it's just like, give your expertise and your thoughts on the music and what you think about the songs or whatever. I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. We did that. And those videos on her channel blew up. So wow. that kind of were like, this is cute. It's fun. We enjoy it. We like, obviously, we love music. We love discovering new music and kind of, that's what we do anyway. We just sit and watch music and we talk about it. Uh -huh. So let's try it on our own YouTube channel and kind of see, just have fun with it. And then that channel just exploded within a matter of... <laughs> <laughs> I always laugh because we used to be, when we first started, we would be messaging each other in our group chat being like, oh my goodness, we got a hundred new subscribers. Oh my goodness, we got 200 subscribers. That happened so fast. 1,000. And then we were like, 
10,000, 30,000, 50,000. Wow. And getting thousands of subscribers every day. So it's like, but it was really a big deal for us at the time. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. And then we've just kind of been continuing with that. We've incorporated a lot of elements of our brand as a group into the reaction series. So it's not just people sitting down watching a video and talking about it, but you're seeing who reverses and you're hearing our song in the intro and you're hearing us sing on the couch when we're watching and you're hearing our experiences of like, when we were at a show or when we did our music video, this is kind of similar to what we did. So it's really finding the ways to balance out, yes, being a music group, but then also having this YouTube series and just kind of making them work together as best as we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, how, okay. So you guys released a record in 2018. Glad to meet you 2.0. So is that so, an album? Yeah. So, so, so glad to meet you originally came out in 2014, right? Oh, so 2.0 is the re-release. Yeah. So, so um, that happened because we, we actually broke up in 2016, 16, yeah. 2016 for a year, we were broken up. And all four upon, of you. So all four yeah. of you at that point, so glad to meet you. The first record was still all four, all four of you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In 2014. And then in 2016, we were broken up. Um, Khadija and I had um, uh, kept working together. We were working with another musician. Um, and uh, long story short, one day the sun was literally, the sun was beaming in my eye and my uh, an ex of mine was playing the reverse 2014 Glad To Meet You album loud in the condo. And I heard it and I was just like, we're not done. <laughs> like, no, literally. <laughs> it's so, this shit is so good. I'm mean, like, the world hasn't heard it yet. This group isn't done. I have to put this back together. So I literally had to call um, and be like, so. Not even, not, <laughs> not even, I had to like tell the guy that we were working with. No, sorry. I have to tell Khadija first. So I know that we've started this group, but how do you feel about going back to reverse? Mm -hmm. So that was another thing, one thing. And then I had to tell the guy that we were working with, so we would like to not do this anymore and go back to reverse. It was very- <laughs> Was it like one of those, <laughs> we wish you well in your future endeavors? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The generic, yeah. you're fired email. <laughs> no, but, but the beautiful thing about it is, is um, we're friends with him and he actually produced two songs on our current album. So, oh, rad. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, and then after talking to him, then I had to actually talk to these two, because even though I, I talked to Gideon and then canceled the group with the other guy, who knows what they would have said. They could have said no. Like I had, I had no idea, but I, I did remember at the time that we were broken up, there were conversations at different points of time where um, Monroe had called me and was just like, so are we like, what did you say? You were like, <laughs> we're not that. I was like, so are we like broken up? Like for, 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 for real, for real? real? <laughs> and, then, and then she was like, so, so, so I was like, yeah, Khadija and I started a new group. And then she was like, but so you're telling me like if Ellen called us right now, you wouldn't put it back together for us and go perform on Ellen. I was just like, I don't, I don't know. know. She was like, no, you will. <laughs> I was like, okay, not over. I was like, watch, watch. And I was like, I was like, okay, sweetheart, I'm sorry. And then here we are. Uh, she was right. So that, and then like the same thing, well, same thing with me, that. It was like, I remember we got together, there was a meeting, we were at a restaurant and the, the, uh, there was murmurs like, like when Diz and I were hanging out in that off period in between and there were some conversations and you could always tell, I, I felt, always felt like the book was kind of like half, like there was a bookmark in it. Mm, it was on right. the, very accessible, yeah. but it wasn't like closed and burned in the pile, you know? <laughs> so it wasn't like there was a big, thing that happened that you guys I mean I don't know if you even feel comfortable talking about this like was there something that happened that you were like we should we can talk about it away thing I think you know, you know what <laughs> glad to meet you I think was just such uh, uh like a, a gift in how like it, the levels of successes that we uh, uh were, were I guess receiving happened very quickly and then uh, with that came as we were talking earlier on like things like management and and uh outside energies we know that when it's like us four we are a family, we stick, you know, where we have each other's backs. And, but it's like when you're We're younger. Always. Yeah, together. <laughs> basically. Uh, God, I love you guys. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> But we're like a force that, that can't be stopped when it's when we're unified. But uh -huh. it's when we're, uh, you know, when we were slightly, you know, I guess younger, a little bit more, hadn't had these experiences previously. <laughs> um, it's, and we're, we're more, susceptible or I guess influenced by uh, voices. I mean, when voices are uh, were coming, I guess, 
and it, it's the usual story that it kind of tear, you know pulls the groups in the group into um, you know their own directions, uh -huh. um, and then it just became uh, a matter of you know it's almost like when someone is so close uh, and you're so close in a relationship and you start fighting for fighting sake almost. Mm -hmm. Where it became more, um, you know, about that, but um, no, no, it was it was about image. It was yeah, about it, it was so, about so image. That's we right. had we had management that believed in what we were doing and came in and loved it and was working to 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 help build the brand and everything like that. And once we started to get more and more successful, they started to get fearful and they started to nitpick at the group. And the hmm. main thing that they focused on was body image. They started focusing on weight and and she needs to lose weight and you need to do this and you and it's so, and, and so there was a lot of tension that was starting to be be built up and insecurities and um then the management um kind of taking different members aside and, and, and saying you know um you'd be better if you were solo or um this person is toxic or uh, does just a lot of like creating dissension within sure the so yeah. it's like a reality TV show producer is going in and be like, did you hear what so-and-so is saying about yeah, it? Yeah, literally. Yeah. And, and, and it, it was, it was, it, it was, it was a lot of lies. And, and, and what we figured out after the fact was that it was um, a lot of their own insecurities. They were just projecting because we were ready to like go for the moon. Like we were like, we're going to move to LA. Remember we were like going to yeah. go to LA. We were going to go and do our thing. And they got scared and started saying, she's not ready. He's not ready. You're this, you're that. This image is not going to work. They don't want They're not going to understand it. And so that really just started to fuck with our heads. It started to right. like, really like mess with us. And, and, and again, the kind of like breaking members, like pulling members apart and like saying certain things, whispers in the ears without us talking to each other, we started to believe that what, what they were saying was true. You start right. Understanding, right? Like you say something to me and your intention is one thing, but I'm in my head like, what did he mean by that? She told me that he thinks this about me. So yeah. is that really what he feels and whatever? And just all of that, the longer that that goes on, it kind of reached a point that we were like, this isn't bringing us joy anymore. We yeah. used to love making music together. We used to love being in rehearsal, love being on stage. And now it's just so stressful yeah. every time we're together. So we actually didn't even like officially like, I'm leaving, I'm never gonna work with you again. We were like, let's right. take a break. Let's like, we need some separation, let's take a break. And then I remember after a little while, not that long, but after a little while, we had a meeting and it was at my house <laughs> and it was so, awkward like sitting it was literally like so was far apart like, from each other like yeah. on the couch like sitting side just like staring at each other like so <laughs> do we want to keep doing this and we're like no like we're done we're done it's over and then we broke up <laughs> but oh, I, man. I'm back to get uh when the first meeting that we had when we uh when I guess the dis discussion as to whether we get back together was going to have was taking place um the first song that we ever sang together as a group which is waterfalls by TLC Oh, a great song. Yes. A great song uh -huh. and one that has made its way into many of our, our shows because it has a special place in our in our hearts. But that mm -hmm. song starts like playing on the restaurant, like, you know, sound system, mm -hmm. like just as we're like sitting yeah. down. It was and, the like, second I, I was the last person to get there. And it was the second that I sat down at the table and the four of us were together for the first time in a year that that song started playing. And like the rest wow. of the thing, any R and B, it was all, rock, it was all rock, rock music. music up until that point, and then I sat down and Waterfalls by TLC started playing. We just looked at we each other. Like, oh, like, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Left eye was looking over you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so crazy. Wow. Okay. Well, then, was the conversation weird when you? I mean, was it like? How did you guys figure out? Like, okay, it's definitely this person was saying this, and then, like, I must have been a moment where you're like, wait a minute. This this management company was totally the one that was kind of curating all this chaos within you know the within the band. I think that answer came with time, and at various points there was like discoveries and things like that. And you know, to this day, I mean, like we were we only can speculate as to what someone else was. I mean, because we we're not like in their you know heads, but we know that with four um kind of uh, first first hand like witness accountings of like of like well this is what happened, and then we cross-reference notes and we're mm -hmm. like well that doesn't make sense yeah um, right now trust each and every member on this group like wholeheartedly and i would not uh, doubt anything that comes out of their 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 mouths today so it's like i i, I believe what what khadijah did and monroe tell me so 
when there's like conflict with what my recollection of like how mm. that happened was, we we can only make you know pretty reasonable uh, conclusions. But I know that even with that time that we were apart, I mean like we all had at various points like things that we all. But I'm just saying like I'm just really grateful that it even in fact did happen because like I knew for for me at least like. I needed some time to like figure some some stuff like sh- shit out myself. Sure. So having that moment of like just pause and kind of like just taking an inventory of like what is the life that I want to create and yeah. also like what are the things I should should and shouldn't be doing like for my own health and mm-hmm. um, so when it, when we did come together it was like just the timing was great it was an easy conversation we were like yeah and, <laughs> and we just, and now we're here. Yeah. Wow. What what year? What was that? A couple of years ago? Because when when you guys decided to get back together, is that when you put out "Glad to Meet You" two point Is that like okay, we're coming back? Here's the the record we're gonna you know that we did four four years ago. We're gonna put it forward, and this is kind of our relaunch as Reverse. Yes. Yeah, so we um so we did rebrand at the time. So before we broke up, it was reverse R E V R S E, like the regular spelling of reverse. Uh-huh. And so when we came back together, we were like, it's new energy. It's a new start, a fresh start. Like we're going to get rid of all that old negativity and we're coming back. We're going to reintroduce ourselves to the world. So Got we did it. glad to meet you 2.0. We changed the band name to R I V E R S E because I V like the Roman numeral for four. Oh we- Yeah meeting we said no matter what happens from now until we are old and gray it always has to be about the four of us before anybody else i love that each other we love each other we know each other the core of what makes reverse magic is the four of us so Uh we put that into the branding of the group and then we put out glad to meet you 2.0 so it was the same album from before but we also included two additional tracks which i always think is so funny Rock With You is right before we broke up. That was the last song we were in the studio recording and it never saw the light of day because we broke up. Uh huh. Put it on to Glad To Meet You 2.0 and then fast forward a few years later, we made that song the theme song for our YouTube series and now it is our most popular song. Like, yeah, I was going to say, that's the most streamed song you have on Spotify. Yeah, all around <laughs> the world. And we say that in the song, we go all around the world. There are people all around the world who listen to that song every day who are messaging us like we love this song so much and we're like that song almost didn't exist <laughs> wow almost never saw the light of day because we broke up but ready here it is oh five six seven eight one we go all around the world holler if you heard you know we got the northeast south west your mr dj gets an up make that system bump I just wanna rock with you, rock with you, 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 you. Oh, la, 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 la. Hey, yeah. Oh my God, you guys are so good. With let's get it popping. Wow, it just you're no, yeah, I love that. That was. You guys are so good. So good. <laughs> I'm speechless. I'm speechless. Oh, wow. You. Okay. Um, so to that, wow. Okay. Now I got to reset. I got to reset because that blew my mind. Um, so when does the YouTube channel start? Was that at like 2018 around the same time? End of, uh, End of 2018. Summer 20, 2018 was when we started the YouTube channel um, creating those and by the end of 2018, it had grown so much that we, because we were doing a lot of K-pop reactions, it had grown so much that our fan base in Korea was so large. We went and we traveled to Korea for a month. Really? Oh, did I, you perform, like, did you tour on that first record? Yeah, yeah. We, we performed in Korea for a month. And we were, we were, so originally our producer um, of Reverse Reacts was, uh, sorry, no, we were going to go to LA. Mm-hmm. And then our producer from Reverse Reacts was like, have you guys looked at your analytics? Like you're actually, your numbers in Korea, your engagement, your, your, the eyes on you guys are, are really from Korea. You guys should consider going there. And we were like, oh my God, really? Korea? Yeah. And then we had never thought of, of doing anything like that. And then we did. And we were recognized on the streets of Korea every single day. It was crazy. For yeah. a month. Oh, for the first wow. time, there's like that level yeah. of yeah. kind of recognition and yeah. people like, 
everywhere we went, yeah. people would just be like running up to us on the street, like, oh my God, reverse, reverse. Yeah. yeah. We it would, was crazy. We would get out of taxis. I will never forget him. Khadija and I got out of a taxi and this girl came behind us and she like tapped us on the back. She's like, oh my God, oh my God, <laughs> reverse, reverse. And I, we're like, what? Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was oh, so wow. Yeah. Isn't that, that's so wild how those analytics work. Cause like, I'll look at ours and I'm like, oh, I mean, we have a lot of listeners in, in like Ireland and I'm like, that's weird. Oh. But like, like you'll see that and like, it's, it's one of those things in like Italy and you're like, well, is this real? Like <laughs> if I went there, do people even care? And for you guys, like, that's so, that's like such a wild story that you, you're like, well, well, mate, let's see. And then you're like this whole big deal. It's like, it, it's real. It's real. It was the best. It was the best. I th it was a really, it was a turning point for us mm -hmm. because there was some, there was very much a magical energy around being in Korea. I remember we were just like, oh my God, we're here. And it just, it just felt um, like, like a shift was happening. Yeah. And after Korea is really when I, I think that there was like a, um, a, a definite um, awareness that the rise that we had always been hoping for was like happening in a real, real big way. Mm -hmm. um, but whenever I, whenever we talk about Korea, whenever we think about Korea, whenever we go back and look at our vlogs or whatever, it just, it just feels like, like this magical thing that I just love it. Like if, if somebody were to walk in right now and be like, here's your ticket to Korea, I'd be like, Bye. Bye. <laughs> you just walk right out on me. I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, going back to, it's funny though. Cause going back to what Zach said, you're like, my mind's always in all these places and the place that you said you were, you were like eating Korea. in Korea. <laughs> how funny how funny wow that's so fascinating what what it's isn't it like wild how the internet kind of works and connects people like from all around the world like you would have never known that there was people this huge fan base of, of yours in korea if it yeah. wasn't for you know kind of the internet and youtube mm -hmm. and everything else that was happening well, I don't, it's like uh it's honestly such a blessing because you know uh we're in a big uh, you know panda bear right now and uh we're asked to stay home and to to be safe and isolate and so as performing artists and and knowing many other peers in our industry um it's been very like basically that like activity as they as we once knew it has been completely cut off i mean there's no tours there's no like big stage concerts there's a lot of the things we can't can't do so having youtube has just like you know and and all of the online platforms Sure. such a blessing today uh, particularly because we were already kind of building in that like in that category like from before so it was um it only made it uh that much more i guess i i, I hesitate to say seamless because this has been very hard i mean for everybody at various sure. points of time yeah. but really i mean honestly we've kind of like we, we've been very blessed we have each other we have uh been able to kind of convert like the the format of our reaction show at points in time doing it over zoom and that was kind of like weird and awkward <laughs> but like hey like we just we wanted to make sure that we were continuing to shine positive lights to all the way with, with zeros and ones and bits <laughs> and bytes people all around the world who probably like needed some joy at that point in time because yeah. there was yeah. so much darkness yeah. happening yeah so Definitely. it kind of like just you know makes me um inspires me to kind of keep going to know that that's possible that we can do that like we're talking to you in nashville right now right <laughs> <That's> so crazy <laughs> Well, I'm okay. So when does the pandemic hit and when does poison Four like, when are you guys writing that record and, and how did that happen? Cause I, I, it, you put that record out last year, yeah. which doesn't even feel like it was a year because everyone was stuck inside, but it's like, when was, when, when were you writing that record recording it? Was it post pandemic? Was it during the pandemic? Um, so, so po poison Ivy. Oh, it's poison Ivy. Yeah. I thought it was poison four because of you guys being four. I mean, you, <laughs> you're not wrong. There's a dual meaning with the Poison Ivy album, and, and one of it speaks to just the energy that we brought in in the Glad to Meet You album. Um, uh -huh. Like we were like the, the bubblegum pop kids. We were giving you like, oh yes, I'm glad to meet you, Zinzaga. Right? Like we were giving you like <laughs> Disney kids. The so, timing like, on you guys is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so so in the so in Poison Ivy, um, I mean the album. This album was six years later. How, yeah. between albums uh, yeah. six years there's a lot of growing that happened in, in those six years and um once we were ready to put out this second album like we were not the the, the disney kids that 
you know, I mean, we still have it at heart, but mm -hmm. through our experiences and our challenges, we wanted to just, we wanted to show um, underneath those layers. So um, the poison ivy is like the is like the darker side. It's the more vulnerable, the more truthful side, um, the more ratchet side. Like we're 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 we we didn't hold back on this album compared to the other one. The other one was, was very kind of like surface and very mm -hmm. feel good, but this one has that as well. But but um, a lot of more a uh, lot more truth, vulnerability, and talking about our real real life experiences. Um, so that's where the poison ivy um, in terms of us comes from. But then the other meaning is just kind of sonically on the album you go from kind of lighter fare at the top of the album and as it continues, almost like injecting poison into your veins through an IV, uh -huh. it gets darker and darker and, and, and um, a little bit more sinister in terms of the sub subject matter and um, topics that we cover. So that's what Poison IV is about. <laughs> but okay. your original question was- wow. pandemic when timing. When was it being written? So the majority of the album was written during the pandemic. Um, but there are a few songs that were written um, before it even started. So there's a song in particular called Stand Up um, that is speaking on uh, police brutality, uh, racial injustice, and things like that. And that was written, uh, I started that process um, once Childish Gambino came out with This Is America. That, oh, wow. Yeah. So this is even pre George Floyd and, all, and everything else that, yeah. that happened after the fact. Yes. So, 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 so that song in particular, um, it was that song and that video changed. It rocked my world. It changed my life. It, um, I, I just saw the power of truth telling, the, the power of speaking on like real shit. I was like, it's time for us for reverse to talk about some real shit. That was the first song that kind of shifted my mind in terms of the songwriting process. Um, into that space was Childish Gambino. So um, Stand Up was written um, really, um, set the case of Sandra Bland, Philando Castile, um, those assassinations um, are really what prompted the songwriting process. Um, and it, was, it wasn't until the, the murder and the assassination of Ahmaud Arbery. That is when um, that whole situation was when we decided that we needed to um, take this song, even though the album isn't finished yet, we need to take this song and make it um, a statement because there's a pandemic. We didn't want to be out in the streets necessarily protesting because we had families and things to kind of think about in terms of our health. And right, we right, of course. We knew, yeah. yeah, but as artists, we were like, we can we can do it in a different way. We can use our, our, our voice and our platform as artists to make the statement that we feel we need to make. And so we decided to, to film a music video and create a mm -hmm. visual for it which we're very proud of. And we did that in the middle of a pandemic. We did that like once the, the Toronto lockdown order was um, lifted like, on the first day, like we went out and there was so many people out. It was very scary, <laughs> so many people out. but we found a cool spot downtown Toronto and filmed the music video. And then literally, I think it was like not long after that, the George Floyd murder happened. So, um, and it was shortly after that that we released the video and it just was very much um, synergistic and it, it, everything, the timing of everything was just very um, interesting how it happened. But um, yeah, it, the album was being curated um, well before the pandemic, yeah. Okay, and did you guys, I mean, you the record wasn't out yet when you put the music video out, is that what you said? Okay. And was there even a thought to like, okay, we have these songs, we, we've worked really hard on this record. Like, do we hold on to it and wait till <laughs> hopefully the world opens? Cause in the beginning it was like, oh, we gotta do is flatten this curve. And it's like, well, we haven't heard that in a year. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, like do, do you hold yeah. on to the record? Like how, how did you guys approach that? It was a process this entire, or 2020, that entire year, we had started recording some songs before the pandemic hit. And actually at the top of the year, we were announcing to our fans, like the album is coming this year. So we we're working in the studio. It's gonna be here so soon. Um, and then yeah, through the whole pandemic, we kept like, trying to get into the studio to finish. We had a couple more songs to do, like, let's just try to get it done. Every time it was like, maybe we get into the studio and then Toronto goes on lockdown again, or maybe we can. And then our engineer was like, oh, this, somebody was sick. So we're like, let's not risk it. Like, it's just all kinds of things, one after the other. And then we did hit a point that we were actually like, should we just put out what we have like the mm -hmm. internet is what it is people are doing things differently like you don't have to always have a full project maybe we'll just put some music out and just see what happens on the internet and then whenever we can get into the studio we'll go and we'll finish the last few songs um 
And that was, that was a big like back and forth discussion with us because yeah, as artists and as songwriters and as everything, like you're working on a project and you can see the vision. You can yeah. understand like what you want your listeners to experience when they finally hear your album for the first time. And the pandemic was just like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, oh, sure. Y'all can't do that. So it really is hard. We're like, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, like we have this music and we love it. We want people to hear it, but we want them to hear it right. Yeah. So that was the balance going back and forth for so long. Um, but then right at the end of the year, we had a little period of time. Like it was actually literally only a couple months that Toronto was not in lockdown and we were like just get it done we were during that time we were in the studio like Every night after day, night yeah. after night after oh night. just hammering out the record at five o'clock in the morning writing songs and then he would come to us and be like i finished the song here's your part here's your part like in the studio in the studio learning <laughs> lyrics as we go like we were just like it has to get done we cannot not put this album out mm -hmm. so really like that I think for us that's why it's so magical when we mm -hmm. listen to the album and when we get messages from people who are like all around the world and this song's my favorite and I love that song and I'm like that song almost didn't even exist <laughs> but it, it feels like everything kind of just fell into place and was like you guys are meant to put this out this is an album that is it is your work, your artistry, but it's also your message. It's your truth. It's talking about the things that the world needs to hear right now. We're talking about police brutality. We're talking about body image issues. We're talking about coming out as homosexual. We're talking, you know what I mean? Like there are all these things that people are going through and especially being locked up in their house in a pandemic, mm -hmm. everything feels so much more intense. Right. So, this music, like it has to be shared with the world. And like somehow, some way, magic, the universe, God, the creator was like, here you go, reverse. Go yeah. ahead and put it on. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Well, I'm glad you guys made that decision to put the record out. And you put out, recently put out an, another music video, right? For why don't, why don't you tell us a little bit about that one? Uh, you talking about Baby Boo? Yes. Woo! Oh, I love Baby Boo. That is our best music video to date. Best music video today, girl. <laughs> yeah, he's getting so excited. I'm too excited. So um, <laughs> we we talked about before how in 2018 we went to Korea, and um, I actually connected with a K-pop producer in Korea, and he has done a lot of music for a lot of K. Uh, very famous K-pop groups there. So one day he was like, you know, I really love to make some music for you guys. And I'm like, really? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, absolutely. So I remember him and I going back and forth and he would send me clips of him working on Baby Boo. And then when it was finally done, I was like, okay, um, I'm gonna show it to the group. So I showed it to the group and did right away. He was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> So instantaneously, Diz was going, like, he heard the chorus, and within the chorus, it already kind of sounded like, my baby, my baby, my boo, my baby boo, and he was like, that's the chorus, and then we all started learning the chorus, and then Diz was like, pen, and paper, <laughs> 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 and here we, here we are with Baby Boo, and it is produced by a famous K-pop producer, and it's definitely in in line with who we are but also very much in line with the musical aesthetic that is out here today like you have groups like bts who are uh -huh. famous and you know have crossed over from the korean music into the u.s music and here we are doing the same thing mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean like adding our own players to it yeah the, love the, it. the great thing i think um i know whenever I, um I'm looking for music production for reverse. Um, and I know all of us do this. The, the production itself has to be a hit on its own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, like that shit has to be a hit on its own in order for the record to be a hit. Like, so, so when Monroe was talking about it, what, what, she, what she meant was like the, within the production itself, Sayong had, uh, oh, sorry, the- um, Mirror boy. <laughs> sorry. Um, the producer, um, the instrumentation <laughs> that he had put in there like had that melody that that is the, the chorus, the chorus melody um, existed in the music. And I was like, it's already there. It's, it's literally laid out. And that's what I mean when I talk about a hit. There was already an earworm built in. Mm -hmm. And I just built off of that. 
but um, uh, being able to take that big record and create a music video for it was phenomenal. And, and, and this was done independently in the middle of a pandemic. Exactly in the middle of a pandemic. Safely yeah. in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, oh, 100%. Like even in the video, you see the dancers are masked and everything like that. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, like, like financed here. Like it was, it was a, we, we made a choice to um, operate at a level. At a level, at, yeah. At a level that was just like higher. Than we've ever done. Yeah, because we were, we were ready. Like we were ready. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so we manifested and suddenly it materialized. We were there and it was the biggest production we'd done. And we're just so proud of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and that was also kind of in that, because we made the decision we wanted to release the album and the music video at the same time. Mm -hmm. So in that little period of time when we were in the studio every night, we were also producing this music video and like, planning and doing our fittings and all this like whatever in that little short little window of time where we're like okay we can safely get this music video done sure. we're also learning choreography learning also choreography like <laughs> yeah, yeah everything just really fell into place for us and we always say like when the path seems so clearly laid out for you you know that that's that's where you're supposed to go you don't sit and question should we be doing this or like is it a good idea or do we really want like just go with it, trust it. And then we put it out and it is the best music video we've ever done. Mm -hmm. I love that. What's funny is what, what you just said is like, uh, my last question is always is, is if you have any advice for aspiring artists and what a gem of advice you just gave right there. <laughs> and uh, well, uh, to that, would you have any advice to aspiring artists? I think um, just based on our mission, our message, everything that we're about and just our own journey. Um, trusting yourself and knowing that your vulnerability and your truth and your authenticity is your most, they are your most powerful assets. So don't be afraid to be 100% yourself and speak your truth and live openly and vulnerably because that is where you're gonna connect with um with your audience you know you're gonna find people who resonate with your with your truth and with your story because as much as we are we are different as human beings we're very much the same and so if you speak your truth and you talk about your journey and your experiences and just kind of lay it out on the line you're gonna you're gonna find your tribe yeah. you're gonna, you're gonna yeah. attract your tribe so that would be my biggest advice um yeah. for an aspiring artist and what about you Monroe? anything to add um pretty much the same thing i feel like we all like agree on that but i also think it's just go for it you know you have you have nothing to lose like it's your dreams i think you should go for it and, and try it and if you fall down you get back up and you keep trying again you know if you're not gonna make it overnight i mean sometimes people do but um it's, it's a journey and i think finding yourself within that journey is a beautiful thing in itself as well so yeah Love that. Zach, I want you to, I want everybody to speak here. This is, um, this is awesome. Well, I'll, I'll just like reference uh, something I learned uh, very recently. Well, not very recently, but uh, it's, it's actually just goes back to the serenity prayer, which is just like, there's things I can control. There's things I cannot. And knowing the difference is fundamental to, at least for me, to my mental health, to like recognizing that like, I can't be the director, the actor, like the, you know, like <laughs> all of those things at one, the producer, the audience, I can't control every single component of it. At some point, it's like, I just have to be me and then release. Yeah. And then the rest like will either figure itself out in the outcome that I originally thought, but maybe there's outcomes I don't even know existed yeah. that I might be equally content with. So it's like, it just really calms me down and helps me find a place of serenity. So for I know with uh, so much uncertainty and like, you know, oh, there's always like, you know, how do, how do we do this? And how does one get, uh, it's cause no one has a book or a manual on how to, how to be a successful pop star, you know? Sure. Business idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but it's, it's just uh, uh, like learning that there's, there's a little bit of just trust and, and open-mindedness and um, release of control on outcomes. I love, I love that. Khadija, I, knew, I didn't really get it. Yeah, I mean, I kind of used your thing as a segue, yeah. but I would love to hear her if you have I any advice that, yourself. Because these, we are very like clear in what our mission is and what our message is. So I think these guys very much covered it already, but I can reiterate <laughs> what I said before, like in all of that, in loving yourself and trusting yourself, sharing yourself openly, 
not giving up, being resilient. All of it is just trusting in the path that's in front of you. If you don't have all the answers, that's okay, but you know what your mission is or what your destiny is or what your goals are. Just continue working forward and trust that it's going to work out. Maybe not the way that you think it will, but keep moving forward. It will work out. Bring it back, bring it back.